back to another episode of And the Change of Seasons, the Circle of Life Artist Interviews. I'm here with some dope artists. I got Joe Brennan here, Barbara Zanelli, Joanna Melamon. Did I say that right? Okay. And of course, we got the homie here, Rafael Tiberino, the curator of the show. How you guys feeling today? Good. Really good. Yeah. Everything all right? Um, sup, Joe? Finally get to meet you. Uh, long time coming. So I woke up walking up with your good friend, Danny Simmons. He was also here, um, here with, with us before. Um, so it's a pleasure to have you. Um, let's get into, you know, who you are, where you're from, how you got into art. Uh, um, yeah, I'm originally from Philly. And, uh, we moved when I was about eight or nine to New Jersey, small town in New Jersey. And uh, I was always interested in art. My dad was an artist, my uncle was an artist, and uh, I was really interested in art ever since I was young. And, uh, in fact, I knew I wanted to be a sculptor when I was around 12 or 13. Okay, what made that, uh, that thought come about? I, I like, discovered some clay. I found some clay in the house and just started playing around with it. And, Being a boy. and I was like, ah, oh, this is great. I just knew it right then. So you, you picked up clay and not play though. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's clay. <laughs> okay. And um, Barbara, how you doing today? You all right? Yeah. You over there looking all subtle and stuff. Um, I've seen a, a few pieces of your artwork and I thought it was really dope. And um, just want to know a little bit more about you. So let us know where you're from. Sure. I'm, I'm from Long Island, New York. And um, I've been drawing ever since I can remember. As soon as I picked up a pencil, I was drawing books on the walls, getting in trouble for it, um, and I knew I was, I knew I wanted to be an artist uh, since first grade, and you know, since my first memory of thinking about that. So, um, yeah, I, I studied painting, I uh, started studying oil painting when I was uh, 12 or 13. And oil painting is very, like, technical work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so I it's was not interested. Hard. I mean, it's, it's not easy to, to get to. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm a classically trained oil painter, so I was interested in learning all the old techniques, old master's techniques. That's dope. Yeah. Look at you, trying to do something with your life. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Joanna. Yes. One of the special people here. Um, I, I, I'm going to act like I don't know you. Yeah, so. well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to act like I don't know you, so give the people a little bit about you, where you're from. Well, um, I'm originally from Belgium. Um, I immigrated to the United States in 1973. Was disco, that was the disco era, right? 70s? Not, not yet. Not, okay. not the, late, the, late, the late 70s okay. was the... Uh, was I know. I, I came through the hippie area. Oh, okay. So you could say I'm an old hippie. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, Joe, for you, how was your... Um, the support of your family. You say you didn't really tell anybody in high school or your friends, yeah. but um, when you went to your family about you wanted to be an artist, how was that support system? Uh, it was pretty good, though, you know, because they were into art, especially my dad and uncle were into art, but they also didn't think you could make a living at it, so it was kind of a two-way kind of thing. But um, it was good, you know, they, were, they liked art, so that was really positive. And what, um, what kept that fire burning for you to, to stick to it? Yeah, I just fell in love with it, you know. Once, the more I did it, the more I loved doing it. And uh, I, I just took on different series. I did, my work mostly ended up being in series. Like, so, I got, my early work, I, I used models. And they were like an inspiration. I think it yeah, they could Oh models. shit! Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> they were real inspiring and, and kept the work going. Uh, later on, I changed and have worked in a lot of different ways, but uh, always been series of, of something compelling me forward with it. And that's that's the traditional thing. I mean, it gets to the point. Nudes, it's like whatever. You go yeah. into class and it's like. Phew. Whatever, because it's every day. It's like you're in. It ain't every day. I can. It's not about you. Oh my god! <laughs> it gets to that point, like when you're in art school and at the academy and stuff like that. And for me, it was younger because you know, like my, my parents always had 
nudes posing and oh, stuff yeah. like that. But literally, it's just kind of another naked body. Like it's like yeah. you're looking for those lines well, and those contours I, I to the point that you know those planes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you really don't care after. Like maybe you know there might be freshman uh, first day of class going in and being like, wow, she's got a good look. Wow, it's just gonna be every day, but that goes that goes away pretty quick, you know. Because yeah, it's right. like you better be more worried about whether you can capture yeah, it and, yeah. put, and paint it or, or I mean, or, after uh, whatever a while, if you look at a good looking image, I mean, it's gonna stay in your head, so no. this is gonna have to come down. Uh -uh. No, no. It's not that easy. No, it's, it's not like a back and it's, forth. It's a professional them. thing. There's it's not that. Forth. You like that? Oh, so I can't just wake up and just say, oh, I want to. Well, it. Maybe you can. It's open for opportunities out here. No, I'm nobody's like, going to uh, kick uh, you out. <laughs> and now, um, all of you guys are chiming in um, as you see fit um, to Raphael. When dealing with, um, when dealing with yourself and trying to uh, push yourself to, to be the best you that you can be. A lot of times we find ourselves by like, hitting certain obstacles and stuff. Sometimes it's self turmoil. Um, but as a as an artist, um, trying to figure out the best way to answer this question. When when you don't have a support system, or when your friend when you can't go to your friend and, and tell them like, yo, this is what I want to do. Like, how do you keep yourself going? Like, you know, just, like That's easy. You either have it or you don't. It's like it's not that easy for everybody, though. Well, it's you. Uh, if you're an artist, you are an artist. You're always coming up with something to do. It may not be to paint the painting today, but it may be like, oh, let me do this garden, mm -hmm. or oh, let me do a mural, or oh, design, or oh, let fashion. It's like constant. You always look it for, oh, I love that. And then you get inspired by maybe the circumstance, nature, whatever. And then you go, oh, maybe I should paint that. And different artists are inspired by different right. things also. I mean, right. art in itself, the creation of art is a very lonely, solitary existence. Yeah. A lot of times you're by yourself in a room. It's like meditation. It's, yes. it's, 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 like, it's like the strictest, most intense form of being a monk in a monastery yeah, yes. doing your own thing. And the culmination of that is when you get to show your work and everyone can can congratulate you on it or or or, or share in the celebration of this work being finished, like we're gonna do with the opening here. Right. But art in itself and the creation of it, you know, everybody might love what you do, but when it comes down to it, it's you in a room by yourself making it happen, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I would say one thing, being in Philly, there was like a really great network of friends mm -hmm. and uh, people that are really supportive. Like I got to know the Tuberinos like early on, like in the, in the 80s. And there was like a supportive group of people that hung out and had showed our work together and actually did our work together even. And so Philly's so really great that way. Yeah. It's like yeah, really wonderful. And, and it really helped, helped a lot to have that. I mean, you're going to do it anyway, like you're saying, like a monk, but it's great to have this other side. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. I didn't, I didn't go into that. There's, there, I mean, there is a large artistic community. Oh, my God. And there are lots of artists that support, and there are lots of people mm -hmm. that get together and talk art and have a glass of wine and, right. you know, hee haw about it and draw together and draw models together and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also that late night by yourself kind of thing. And that's when I do my best work, you know, it's like when I do my pen and inks and things like that. It's, yeah, you. You be up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you be up. I, do. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> no. But for me, I'm like my mother. My mother was a night out. She she got her best work in from about 11 at night until about 6 in the morning. And then there would be the changing of the guard where my father would be getting up. They would exchange, you know, in terms of looking at what she did over the course of the night. And then he would start his shift where he would do his best work from about 5 in the morning until about 10 or 11 or whatever. And then that that's when he flourished and did his stuff. So, you know, it's, it's different for different artists, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What about you, Barbara? Well, I just wanted to say that every time I, like, tried to veer from being an artist, like, tried, it would, some, it would, the universe would bring it right back to me. Like, I remember when I was in Korea teaching English, I, I, I walked into a, some guy's house because I smelled oil paint and, 
ended up meeting him and we came Wait, together. Wait, you like you were walking by? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was like, like oh, hey, yeah, I'm I here. saw the <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I ended up meeting him. He didn't speak any English. He was, his name is Chang Wan. He's like in his 70s, Korean painter, and we just painted together on Saturdays. And that's what oh, wow. I survived like a year. And like, how how was that uh, experience with him? Like him not being able to speak English. But it didn't matter because we were just together. painting together. I'm saying, but how how were you able to communicate? Oh, uh, um, you didn't need to. Yeah. Just like, hey, I'm <laughs> I got a He was over there, I was over here. Right. They could come over sometimes. And, you know, once in a while, a friend would come over for dinner with us and we'd translate. And I ended up interviewing him with somebody else. And, uh, yeah, so it. The universe is always giving me signs, like if I ever start to doubt it, at this point I don't doubt it. It's, um, That's what's up. Yeah. You found your, your center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we had a great conversation. Um, I've learned a lot about you guys. Yoan, of course, I know you, but we're just playing for a character for him. Um, now, what, what I've been seeing a pattern of um, in all of the interviews. Raphael has uh, really put to, brought together a group of people that in some way, shape, or form have a similar storyline. We all had some kind of magnetic pull to Philadelphia and we're here because of the art community. Um, Joe, you, you, um, you're from here. Um, so allowing outsiders to come into the city here and understand the culture that it brings, like how does that ever affect you as like, being from here? Oh, well, I think it's good, you know, people come to the city, especially artists, and uh, uh, my neighborhood's changed a lot, just all the gentrification going on. But besides that, the art community has gotten richer and bigger, and I think that's real positive. And what, what do you, um, being an a, a old-timer in the scene, uh, <laughs> any, uh, any advice you would give to an a artist that's trying to come out or somebody that can't go tell their friends that this is something they want to do? Just stay with it, you know, like be persistent and just if it's telling you that you, you need to do the art, you should just do it, you know, keep doing it. Reach out, find people that are interested, find people that are into doing it that, that will support you. a lot of people that are interested in art. Now you you um in the beginning you, you brought up that you were um that you came over to the to America and your first year was hard. Um trying to integrate your your own creativity and talent into the American culture. Was that difficult for you or was it just an extra boost for you to um, to take off? Well it was difficult because the culture here at that time was not up to par to the culture in Europe. I mean, it's so high culture there, you know. I mean, uh, and then when I came here, it was, there was no culture, like old culture. It was, it's American culture. So that took about a year to get used to that. But then I started finding my way, you know, going to New York, going to the big cities and then things, I go, oh, wow, look at this, look at that. You know what I mean? There was, right. and Philly, lots of art and art culture here. And, yeah. So once once you were, um, once you got opened up to the art culture, um, once you once you find yourself drawn in, how was that, um, how was that new feeling for you? Like understanding there was other people that were like you out here. There's nobody like me. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> we all know that. But I'm saying, like, having like-minded artists that that um that were inspired and uh, like had the passion. I don't understand your question. Okay, um, let's try it again. Uh, how was it meeting other other artists here? Well, that was great, of course, because over the years I've been meeting artists all the time, like Barbara and I know each other for like seven, eight years now. Um, I met this good looking man. Um, 10 years. And you, but your dad Longer was friends that. with 34 years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you, once 
you're in the art community, you got different artists, different medium, but different things, you know, I mean, not everybody paints. Uh, you then get exposed to more people. And then you get uh, exposed to groups and friends and you may, yeah, you just become part of it. It's kind of like dealing with a group of people that all suffer from the same sickness. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, le a leper colony. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's fun because only somebody that does art really can understand what you go through sometimes. Right. Like to create something. Like I have painter's block sometimes where I what get. Is, well, how, how do you get painter's block? I, I've heard it. I heard. I've heard the terms a few times. You just, but how you do you can't work? You can't, can't work. Paint, nothing moves you. Nothing. Can't work. You just. You take a break. You have to. Yeah. You can't and draw more lines. No. Nope. You can, but there's no. There's no feeling no, behind. No feeling behind. Oh, so okay, you need. Okay. You need to step back. Yeah. Get your head back on straight again. Sometimes it takes a month, sometimes yeah. longer. You Two just months. gotta do other things, things that yeah. things that excite you, things that reinvigorate you, yeah. maybe a little traveling, something like yeah. that, and then, then and then it comes back, you know. Barbara, you ever had writer's block? Oh not writer's block. Uh, I mean, uh, writer's block. <laughs> from the way they're describing it, yes. I I guess I never thought of it that way, but then yes. <laughs> okay now. But then um, I paint anyway. I because. just took of it as a natural cycle, like yeah. Yeah. Barbara, during your uh, during your time here, you went to a a moment. Oh, a studio in Caminati. Uh, in in yeah, Caminati. Yeah, it's like it actually. It's, How do you pronounce it? It's an I Italian don't... word. Okay. In Caminati. In in Caminati. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah. 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 I was watching too much, uh, too much of Brandon, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, in Caminati, can you tell us a little bit about the school? Yeah, uh, it was founded by Nelson Shanks in 2001 or two, and he styled it after there's a school in Bologna, Italia. Italia. Names. I got <laughs> so, yeah, it. Was, it was called Studio Deli in Caminati, and it was founded by the Karachi Brothers. Okay. And it was supposed to be like a rebellion a little bit against the French. And that's, that school actually brought you to the city, right? Yeah, he like literally brought me to Philly. He's like, I was in New York City, the Art Students League, and he saw I had talent. He's like, I want you to come to my house and show me your portfolio. And I had my work spread on his 18th century Baroque carpet. It's like, the man lived in a museum. <laughs> and I'm just like, I felt like I was in a movie. And I had, I had all my horses spread out. And he's like, I'm giving you a scholarship. Wow. And I was just like, is this, is this real? <laughs> Now, just just so everyone uh, is up on Nelson Shanks, also he's a famous painter in his own right. And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, he's the one who did the official Clinton yeah, painting, right. right, for the yeah. White House. All right, so Clinton's oh, okay. official portrait. You know how every president gets an official mm -hmm. portrait when they're right. done. Nelson Shanks is the one that did Bill Clinton's uh, painting. Well, that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's done like Princess Diana, the Pope. Like, oh my God! Yeah, yeah. He's, anything famous he's painted. Yeah, that's very cool. And he, supposedly, he died, he died a month after my mom died in 2015. Yeah. And they've been talking lately that supposedly yeah. there's some hidden stuff in the, uh, yeah. in the, the, the a blue dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little blue dress that alludes like to Monica shadow. Lewinsky. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so that's, that's the big that's the big thing lately. Like, he, he stuck a little a little some hidden some yeah. hidden stuff in the painting, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, it gets boring being in the studio by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got some private things that maybe only you think you're gonna see. Yeah. So so Barbara, you being uh, a part of the other ones here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the story, actually, actually the story you just gave about how you got your scholarship is a story not too many people get in a lot of time. That's something that's pretty yeah. much like a lot of routine. Yeah. So if um, if you were to share kind of words, uh, regardless of how you got your start, and if, although it is a blessing, um, what would be your words of encouragement for a, 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 an artist coming up behind you? Um, I, it's, it's to always have gratitude for um, you know the gifts that I'll speak from my experience, to have gratitude for the gifts that I'm giving, the only way to really show that gratitude is to do it and uh, not throw it away, you know, and not be, um, like the most arrogant thing you can do is, is not believe in yourself and not um, take what you're given and use it. Um, so I had to learn that over time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was watching Walk the Line about Johnny Cash the other night, and like there was a scene in the movie where he's looking at all the fan letters, and um, and then he gets back on the horse, you know, after finding the Egyptian, and 
and I, I started crying because I, I realized like um, for some reason like there's a lot of resistance to like doing the thing that you're meant to do. Right. Um, and like really it's it's to be humble is to do it. It's to have gratitude and to do it and uh, responsibility for it. Now Raphael. Um, yes. Curator, yes. Um, the guy that brought these magnificent people together. Um, any uh, final words of uh, uh, words of encouragement? The uh, it's really the working all the time, you know, and not stopping. I mean, I'm finally, I think, becoming almost with almost 50 years on this earth, finally starting to become an artist that I think is good, right? You know, and. You know, hopefully I'll have another 30 years to really get good. You know, it's, 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 it's about, you know, yeah. you know, continuing to work on your craft and, and get it done, you know, and and, uh, and be as fearless as possible. Keep, keep it going. Okay. Well, uh, again, guys, make sure you come out October 12th for the End of Changes Seasons, the Circle of Life Art Gallery open, grand opening. Um, we'll commence at 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 6. 6 o'clock. The six grand opening is 6 to 10. 6 to 10. I'll be here. My beautiful personality will be here. My sexy eyes will be here. You know, they'll be here as well. But, uh, you know. <laughs> so long as you stop <laughs> winking at me. Hey, baby, listen. It's, it's, all in, it's all in the personality.